And with this, I say cautiously. Yeah. You see, in this society that we live in today, mm. in these houses, we are all in our roofed houses. Yeah. And when we walk out there, nobody really knows us. Mm. Uh, today, I have a colleague with me who is a parent. And given that my topic for today is about parenting and also to touch a little bit on the current social trends, I, especially in terms of parenting. Now, I'll let her introduce herself and uh, also tell us a little bit about parenting as a whole because she's a parent as usual. So, welcome and tell us your name and also touch a little bit about what we are going to talk about. Okay. Uh -huh. Well, thank you, Dan. Um, my name is uh, Frida Linda, and um, uh, I'm, a, I'm a therapist. And as you say, I'm a parent. And um, well, when it comes to parenting, I, won't, I can never say that there's a right way or wrong way to do it. Because, I mean, we all come from different backgrounds as, as humans, as people. And uh, the way we are, were parented also differs. And this also uh, says a lot into how we ourselves will end up parenting. It can be how we agree as a couple or for the single mothers what you feel is best, is a best fit for you as a person and for your children also because um and and the other thing is that parenting changes with time um the way you will parent your six month old is not the same way you'll do it at uh two years what they call the terrible twos it's not the same way you'll do it at six years and so on and so forth so for today i believe we'll be touching on um parenting specifically our preteens and uh, our teenagers and uh, the, the subsequent years after teenage. Um, and when you talk about the current trends, uh, we are looking at uh, why we are looking at this specific group is because this is a time when their, 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 their sexuality or their sexual preferences are being defined and they are di discovering themselves. And when we look at what is happening right now, either there is an information overload or exposure of too much information. And uh, here in Kenya specifically, we have um, our education system changing quite a bit. And uh, we have what we are calling the CBC that has a lot to, and, and our children are being taught to be self-aware and to, you know, they, they, they are exposed to much more as opposed to what we had earlier. The information that is out here about sexuality is just, it's too a much. sea mm -hmm. of, of, of information. And we have too many trends coming up, including the LGBTQ uh, and we also have those who are, you know, those who are trying to experiment. They are neither here nor there. And I mean, it's, it's, it's quite something. Yeah. So uh, before we get into the details of uh, the other things, <coughs> uh, could you please just try to share with us how it is to being a mother of daughters? Uh, they say daughters are a blessing. So... <laughs> The, given that the, given the stage where they are right now, how is how has it been like raising them? Wow, um, you know, girls are like flowers when they are younger, when they are dressing up in all the nice. You know, you do dress up with all the nice dresses, and they are so sweet when they are playing with their dolls. And um, of course, the stage between from childhood all the way to pretty and around nine it's all nice and roses and you know all the nice things about girls mm. then we get to nine and of course they start growing the, their, their breasts and they become a bit shy 
um, they're a bit aware of, of their weight, especially I found it very funny that my daughter had issues, you know, she had issues with her weight mm. at nine, you know, she was complaining that she's too big, you know, and, and I, I, to me, this is a baby, you know, why, why are you so bothered? It's okay for you to be, I mean, in the African traditions and in the African custom, you know, if my mother-in-law sees my daughter slim, she should be like, why are you not feeding <laughs> the child? So, <laughs> so for me, that was uh, quite something. Yeah. But of course, with, as they get into 11 years, they, they start losing it a bit mm. and they gain their confidence. And of course, this is a time when boys are noticing, so they get a bit shy. They want to be, they, they want to pick their own dresses, and yeah. you know, they start defining themselves ideally. Mm. And 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 that is quite a crucial time for them. I I am privileged and I'm blessed to be a mother of uh, right now. The youngest is uh, eleven, the, followed by a fourteen-year-old, and two girls who are 21 they are twins yeah and um it's 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 um it's fascinating that everybody each each one of them even the twins mm. have kind of matured they have graced the different stages yeah. especially teenage mm. differently and it's interesting that even the one you thought would be quiet ends up being the talkative one the one who was shy becomes very bold so mm. they everything is it's all different with the different children and as i said at the beginning parenting is specific yeah to families to individuals and even to the children the way you parent the way i parent my nine-year-old cannot be the same way i'm parenting or even the same way i parented my 21 year old when she was nine yeah. it is very different because of course, parenting a firstborn is a bit, you know, you tend to be clingy, you tend to be over, over possessive, protective. protective. Yeah. But as you go down the number of children, you kind of ease up a bit. You realize, you know, it's never that serious. <laughs> and somehow they have a way of navigating also. Yeah. As a child, they are created, the way you bring them up also helps them in navigating through the different stages of life mm. yes that's very interesting you mentioned a, a something about uh, a nine-year-old having a, an issue with weight and uh, navigating through life in that situation can be a little bit difficult so are there some tips that you could maybe help uh, our listeners to deal with such kind of issues at that particular time Okay. And how is she now ah, with she's, weight? And she's very happy with herself right yeah, now. She's yeah. a happy 11-year-old, very excited about life. Mm. Um, one, uh, as a parent, from the word go, we are told to, 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 to keep our com the communication channels in the family open and have atmosphere we we are encouraged as well to have an atmosphere where we encourage self expression yeah you see if i remember when we were young I, in our times i think uh, parents were fathers were to be feared mm. and <laughs> mothers were to you know, the, they were the ones now you could talk to, but there were limits. Yeah. Okay. So mm. you find that that communication was never really open. There was no atmosphere for you to even express what you felt yeah. because you were a child. You were there to be seen and not to be heard. To be heard. But now things have changed. Our children, they want, they want to talk to you. They actually, I, I, I realized at some point... My children will tell me, Mom, I'm talking to you, look at me, you know. <laughs> you see, that already tells you mm. that this child wants to, is, is com wants to command your attention to, and, uh, to realize that you're, she wants to see in your eyes that you're understanding what they are telling you. Yeah. And once you foster that climate where, that kind of environment where a child can freely tell you mm. how she feels <coughs> or how he feels and can tell you what worries them, 
then I feel that is a good platform even for them in future to be able to to in the relationships that they go into the workplace yeah. into relation even <coughs> like relationship with spouses and friends yeah. to be able to talk you know to voice their whatever their issues are or to voice you, you know to have a ground yeah. to for good boundaries because that's where we teach these things the more you have conversations with them yeah. the more you empower them to make good decisions for themselves to be able to to express where they feel this is not working out and yeah. how do I go about this to be able even to be courageous enough to ask for help when they need it so mm. for me i felt that helped her because the fact that she was able to come and tell me mom i am um, i feel like my my friends are laughing at me and i think it's because oh, i have no grown i have added weight not that she was even that overweight but it was not her normal self she was mm. always a skinny girl so she had added some weight as she neared that nine years yeah and uh, there was a bit of covid uh, it was time of covid so nothing much was happening so mm -hmm. i was able to help her through maybe the uh, at least we would go we would do exercises together we would go for walks together and that kind of put her in a right place she's a swimmer yeah. so the minute she got back to school she went back to swimming and her body just Turned came back down. yes Okay. Came back and she's okay now. That's interesting. So you, what you're saying is that uh, the main thing is to communicate openly, open the communication channels, and uh, let your children be free with you, yes. especially the preteens and the teens. Yeah. Okay. So um, maybe before again, I want to still go back to that. Yeah. Uh, when you look at when you look back. What would you say have been more in, most interesting and what would you say that has been more challenging about raising teenagers specifically? Okay. Um, the most challenging, let me start there. Yeah. There came a time when my kids just shut me out. <laughs> 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 here we are coming from a place where we talk about anything anything when people are about to start their periods they are asking all manner of questions mm. when they learn about anything to do with their sexuality in school they come home they are so excited to tell me and they want to know mm. what is all this mom what is this mom what is this and then suddenly i'm just shut out pop and i'm like are you okay and they'll sit there very quietly you okay? Yes. You need anything? Mm -mm. <laughs> How was your day? It was fine. And mm. you're thinking, really? Like, talk to me. Talk to me. I remember once when my daughter, one of the, one of the twins was in high school. Mm. I remember once I was driving to town with her. And she barely said one word. Like for two, a 20 minutes drive. Mm. And I told her, you know, you, I, you can alight <laughs> because I cannot do this. <laughs> <laughs> it, it it frustrates you as a parent because you feel like there's so much you're missing out on yeah. and you you feel like it's so painful when you can't get through to your child so you're wondering is she is she in a bad place is there something going on and i don't know yeah. it really tears you apart as a parent mm. but apparently i came to learn that it's a face Okay, mm. they, and they, they 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 need it. You know, they they just recoil to themselves, and I think this, to my understanding, it's the time they are trying to figure in their head what really is happening to my life, and you know where do I stand? And also, I think they question in their minds. They're also questioning you as a parent. They're wondering, do I continue being friends with her? I mean, she's my mom, yeah. so, you know, they're, they're trying to find that balance and that can be a very daunting time for mm. them. So that was challenging for me, but with time, I think it passed, the face passed. Of course, I would, as parents, I'll encourage you, even when they recoil to that place, mm. one, keep trying, do not also push. jump back or don't push too hard, but also do not recoil to yourself as well and say, what do I do? Mm. You know, if they don't want to talk to me, what should I do? So don't do that. You're the parent. At the end of the day, you will always be the parent. Yeah. Keep trying to reach out. Do not give on your child because sometimes when you give up, that's when now they really, 
digress and just go go for go for help or go reach out to someone else and sometimes that's it's never right, the right person so it's it's good you keep trying just show them that you don't give up on them yeah. and even when they're not <coughs> giving you the stories give them a story and it's okay if they don't react or if they don't uh, talk back yeah. it is very okay okay mm -hmm. but just keep reminding her that you, uh, him or her that you love them that you what you want the best for them and just just hang in there hang in there it's as i said it's it's uh, the parenting is is a thing not for everyone <laughs> yeah <laughs> yes that was the most challenging yeah. so far mm -hmm. um yes and to add on mm. i would be locked out of bedrooms and it would be they would look offended if i walked into their room and i did not knock yeah and i'm thinking this is my house <laughs> <laughs> it is my house why do i have to keep knocking surprise you know you. and one time i took my daughter's towel and wiped my hands and she told me mom she was very offended and mm. she told me mom my towel is a personal item i am not supposed to share so please next time do not use my towel mm -hmm. and you think wow <laughs> <laughs> Yes. <laughs> boundaries, boundaries. And that's healthy. It's a good thing. Mm. They they they're creating boundaries, you know, you they they you you know even on the door you they start sticking, you know, out of bounds. <laughs> Please knock before you come in. Mm. You know, those stickers, they come up on the doors and you go and you're thinking, why are we doing this again? But it's healthy. I want to encourage you if there's a sticker on the door, knock before you enter. Please knock. knock. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or stand at the corridor and call out a name. Yeah. Yes, and sometimes you'll be told, "Mom, you do not have to shout. I've already heard you." Mm -hmm. Respect <coughs> that. Knock once, leave it. Let them open. Mm. Okay. So the the other one was the the, the most interesting bit ah, of it. Ah, the most interesting bit of it. Yeah. Being being friendly and I say this with in quotes yeah. because being your child's friend is usually can be translated into many things mm. but being a friend to your children and especially as they are growing yeah. is so important i enjoy the company of my own children a lot mm. from the youngest to the oldest we always have things to talk about and it's it's such a joy that we can talk yeah it's such a joy when your daughter goes to campus and comes to tell you about the weirdness <laughs> that is in campus. Mm. Okay? And it's such a joy when your when your when your when your teenage or preteen child yeah. comes home and is telling you about the changes going on in her body and how they are making her feel and she's asking you if that's okay. Mm. One time my daughter called me from school. Yeah. And she told me, "Mom, you're a therapist. See, your work is to talk to people mm. and understand them." I, and I told her, "Yes, recently." And she tells me, "Mom, there's this friend of mine and this has happened and mm. this has happened. What do you think I should do?" Yeah. I was so touched. <laughs> that was my 11-year-old and I was so touched as a parent because that tells you they believe in you mm. and they are they're trying to learn from you how to navigate through life and that's i mean what can be more important than knowing that you have a positive impact and no, seeing your children grow gracefully yeah. and above all we pray for each other a lot mm. okay we have just a group for we call it us girls yeah. and uh, we 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 share in the morning if we share verses we talk about we talk about our what we are hoping for the day mm -hmm. just on the chat <coughs> and through the day we keep in touch yeah. and whenever somebody is having a challenge they will share and say i am having this kind of day please pray for me mm -hmm. and that is so special to share with your children yeah yes okay that's 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 interesting so uh before we get into the other part that uh, is a little bit controversial, <laughs> yes. uh, uh, let me ask, 
what what is your opinion just in a in a short in a short sentence mm -hmm. what's your opinion on the on preteens and teenagers having both parents actively present in their life it is very important i must say because um through the different ages yeah. children will identify with like the either parent for different reasons yeah. and um, for example i believe for a boy m you hear men marry their mothers yeah. because a child from the time they are born they see their mother the mother is a representative of everything and they help them learn anything they need to know about the female yeah. female uh, the females in their lives they learn fast from their mothers mm. so beware that's why we are told to beware around our children a lot because what are we telling them women are like are like mm. you know same to men what are your daughters learning about men from you mm. because that's what they go with yeah yeah and for me that's that's uh, that's i that's why i feel it's important that each parent mm. to know that you're not just a parent by coincidence yeah okay god gave you that child for a reason even if you part ways mm. try as much as possible even if you're not with the mother of your child yeah. try always try as much as possible to make time and just be a parent to that child you fostered because at the end of the day i mean you cannot be given something mm. by god and you know it's just for you to you know your your main role in this world was just to bring forth that child and walk away it is wrong mm. have an impact and that's why you see even children who are born and they don't know their fathers later looking for fathers and mothers yeah. because there's a there's a part you're supposed to play in this child's life so it is important at any point not even just teenage not preteen mm. be active and try to be present yeah. in your child's life mm -hmm. whether you're still a couple or whatever the situation is yeah. try things have changed it's not like kitambo mm. yes okay i understand you so now getting into you know teenage youth and maybe preteen comes with a lot of challenges and uh, one of them now given the current trends in the world there is a lot of uh, talk here and there about uh, issues to do with LGBTQ, yeah. uh, people being binary, people being non-binary, and all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. So, <clears throat> like now, being a mother to to girls, yeah. uh, one day, because now you have uh, girls who are in campus, and that's where... A lot of we're talking about weirdness. Yeah, experimenting. <laughs> so experimenting and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. So, what happens? What's your what's your what's your take on this concept of LGBTQ and sexuality in general? Okay, I I I believe I I I said this at the beginning at some point yeah. is that teenage and uh, going forth. Mm is a time when our children are really beginning to embrace their sexuality they're beginning to realize you know i am born a girl mm. i am i have all these aspects of a girl i'm female mm. okay yeah. then they they could accept that mm. and some <coughs> will say no i am born a girl yeah but i don't feel like one okay mm same to the males okay yeah. and in the african society we are, we are still struggling with the whole idea of um, that we get, you know we 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 are for the concept that our sexuality is defined biologically mm. okay yeah so you find and and here i will come into i will probably talk about the part of parenting this in general yeah. i'll capture a lot of how to parent uh children in this age of um, 
it's you know all this sexual definitions mm. and definitions of how what it is that people are and what they are not yeah. and i will touch uh, i will drop in a bit of the uh, some points on how to do it mm. in my opinion this is not uh i'm not stamping anything here this is just my opinion as yeah. a therapist and as a parent mm-hmm. one as a parent why i say we need to be aware of what we do around our children who we are around our children yeah. and especially in their preteens and teens what kind of influence what do your actions say mm-hmm. okay mm-hmm. about sexuality about being a man about being a woman what are they saying to your child yeah. and you find many children nowadays uh, i do a bit of uh, i do therapy i do a bit of counseling for university students and there's a lot of marriage is 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 a hoax mm. they say that to my face all the time yeah so what are they saying they're saying this relationship you call marriage that you came together and brought me up in a family mm. and you two say you're married you're lying to us it yeah. is not a relationship mm. okay mm. so when you hear Charles say that you see they are seeing things that they are like no you know they are learning we mm. said it's a time of it's an information age where there's all this information for consumption yeah. and they are saying they're looking at what they are learning in school probably mm. or what they are talking about with their friends and about relationships yeah. then they are looking at you too and they're wondering what are they doing this is not a marriage this is not love mm. you see that is how they define it and sometimes we, parents we disappoint our children so much mm. and when you disappoint that child just at the right time in terms of this is a child who's just getting into puberty yeah and uh you know starting to feel all these things about being either male or female mm. their emotions they changes physiological and and they look at probably the opposite parent sex uh, the the opposite parent uh, that is um, if it's a boy mm. you're looking at the mother and this mother is hurting this boy for example yeah. okay mm-hmm. the things she's doing he doesn't like them at all mm. and he's saying i would not want that i don't like that mm. Then the boy starts seeing the female on a very negative side for example if the mother is manipulative yeah okay then the boy starts understanding that females are manipulative, manipulative mm. okay mm. and the father is this gentleman and she he starts seeing wow you know that's that's a good man i want to be like that man mm. okay so if this as this boy grows he's what is the natural what is a natural reaction he tends yes he is inclined to think men are loyal men are good people mm. okay and what does that say you you kind of will be attracted to, to such okay but does it really does it really not mean? necessarily sexual mm. but you find yourself preferring that side company company then we come to the point where we start experimenting mm. okay yeah what is a natural inclination for that child that will depend yes but most likely that would be a direction to mm. take mm-hmm. we are experimenting we are not deciding yeah okay mm-hmm. we are not deciding and as i said with the kind of exposure that is going on out here mm. it is very scary okay and sometimes you can only influence your child's decision making to a certain point yeah and the rest you pray and pray and pray as much as you can <laughs> because it's only god who can be who can be in control at that point mm. and something else i realize is that as a parent what are you talking about in your home mm. okay what are, you know we watch we are sitting watching news and they talk about for example when they were debating uh, passing the, some legislation about lgbtq yeah what you know when yeah. what are you saying what when you hear 
such news. What are your comments as a person? We need, as parents, we need to be very purposeful yeah. in the things we say in front of our children, and especially concerning ongoing affairs, mm. and be very sensitive on issues to do with sexuality. Yeah. Because you might badmouth a certain issue, maybe LGBTQ, but you never know you're hurting your child mm. at the same point, a time. Or you're even putting, like, um, you see all this... Uh, hatred and this negative negative uh, sentiments we may have yeah. regarding one sex or one's preference sexual preferences we need to be very careful about that remember these children these mm. people who you see out here um bashing bashing the gays bashing blacks ba bashing you know the whites they come from our houses yeah. and where did they learn that negative sentiments they are learning them in our in the homes in the very you know the the very homes that we say are supposed to nurture mm. them into good people into good citizens so let's be very sensitive about that mm. when you when you you know when you when your child even brings up a topic maneuver through it if you don't have the answers be honest and tell them i will have to find out but do not answer what you don't know mm. by, you know, maybe presumptions or what you, or hearsay. Yeah. Get information, get the right information for the sake of your children so that what you're giving them will help them mm. and not destroy them. Yeah. And also, as you give them that information, also make them understand that information is not everything. Mm. Information is only useful when it is put to the right use mm. and also as you put it to the right use you have to make a decision on how to use it because you can put it into use but you're you're using it wrongly so make help them to to use that information to make sound decisions about life yeah yes so um, from the perspective of a therapist and also you know after all all of us are human beings mm. Uh, this is a concept that it's not new to to us. Yeah. But you know, it has been under wraps for a long time. Mm. Like we said, uh, there's nothing that is being stamped here. Yeah. But these are things that have uh, persisted or existed throughout the years. It's only that it's now coming off, and people it's like people are pushing it so much. Now, for our parents. It was never something that you could talk about openly mm -hmm. and maybe directly say that you are you are in this you belong to this category of people who define their sexuality in this mm. particular manner mm. for you as a parent right now if your daughter came maybe the youngest or maybe the oldest came and told you that you know mom uh I no longer feel like a girl or a woman and um, my preference is women. Will you take it now? Here you are you're putting on two shoes. Mm. It is so easy for you to slip off and say that, okay, let's put the heart of a therapist yeah. away mm. and take the heart of a parent. Mm -hmm. Would you exactly accommodate all this or accept it the way it comes or what will be your reaction as a parent? Wow, that's a tough one. You're putting me on the spot. <laughs> but at, um, one thing I'll tell you is that um, right now, yeah. I'm a bit self-aware. Mm. Earlier, I would have reacted differently some yeah. years back. But right now, mm -hmm. what I do know is that one when a child is speaking to me as a parent yeah i am to embrace that child with a lot of love mm -hmm. number one because at the end of the day gay straight lesbian or whatever it is yeah. they claim to be inclining to they are still your child mm -hmm. they they have not changed and that will not change even when it's, it's they have affirmed and they are sure and this is the direction they are going to yeah 
they are still your child. Mm -hmm. Embrace your child with a lot of love. Mm. Listen with a lot of love. Okay? Mm. Inwardly, you may be breaking apart. Yeah. Okay? But as parents, we are to put on that brave face because that child needs to be listened to. The reason they come to you is mm. because they want a listening ear. Okay? Yeah. Number two, for parents, we, we let... Uh, in in uh, in the african actually in swahili yeah there's something we say uh there's a i think it's a medali it's a proverb it says usi usifanya nini mkunga uzazi ungalipo yes do not swear that you know we find ourselves doing that mm. earlier and this is for the younger parents no, my child cannot be this and that. Yeah. My, I would not have it. You know, those are, those are us. You know, we say never, never, never. But you see, that child, you're saying that your child is two years old. They still have a whole long way to go. Yeah. And sometimes maybe it is just a face. Okay. Like, I remember, there are children who, in their teenage, they'll come and shave some weird hairstyles. Mm. Meet them five years down the line. They are this groomed, my, groomed young man with very short hair, very neat. Yeah. And he used to have mbaka a rose. And, you know, until a, he had a nose ring. Mm. And you're wondering, what happened to you? So sometimes, understand that it's, sometimes it could be a face. Mm. Okay? As I said, uh, there's a lot of experimenting going on. Yeah. And the best you can do is, fine, this child has already told you, this is who I, I, I think I'm liking this, and try and find out. Of course, listen and ask the right questions. Mm -hmm. Why it is it? Try and find out when did it begin, yeah. okay? And how did you really figure out that that is what was happening? Mm -hmm. So that also, if there are some misconceptions, as a parent, mm -hmm. you're able to correct, of course, with a lot of tactic mm. because this is a this is a growing person and you need not to you know you there, there can be things you can say that can completely now destroy them mm. you know and destroy their confidence so you need to be very tactful on the words on the choice of words you're going to use because if they are if they are if they are they are saying that they like girls yeah. i don't think it would be right for you as a mother to say, okay, so you think you're a lesbian. Mm -hmm. No, don't do that. <laughs> do not use labels. And this is so important because they have not told you, mom, I'm a lesbian. So mm -hmm. you cannot open your mouth and say, oh, so you're a lesbian. Mm -hmm. No, don't do that. Okay? Let them discuss what they are comfortable to tell you. Mm -hmm. Okay? And... With time, as you continue engaging her, yeah. you get to understand where she's coming from. Okay? You get to really understand. And now, for, uh, speaking as a therapist, I'll tell you this. All this, every behavior yeah. has its origin somewhere. And when I wear the hat of a therapist, I'll need to find out, I'll need to figure out where did it begin? Where did the rain start beating, mm. you know? And try and see how either, if you're going, one, acceptance is so important. Let me tell you that, accept that child as they are, okay? It touches on their sexuality. And as I said, you find many of them, especially when they do this early in teenage, yeah. some of them will change eventually. Some of them might not change. Mm. But once you accept that child, then they begin to like even dig deep in themselves. Okay? Mm. Because they start, you know, you, you help them to understand that there's a difference because they are telling you there's, they are different. Yeah. Okay? Now you begin to help them to explore this difference. What really does it mean to be, to be either um, gay or to be a lesbian or whatever it is they are claiming they, they feel they are, they are, they are, they are, they are like growing into? Mm. 
yes because the minute also you you might talk to them you know there's a way you as, as parents we can you listen and you're there smiling but you're not convincing and these children are so smart they'll pick it yeah they mm -hmm. will pick it so the minute and that 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 part that they will pick is the acceptance part mm. yes but now uh you know we can't speak for other people mm. but uh we're africans yeah and right now actually there's a big revolution going on against the lgbtq uh -huh. community now you as a parent you know you you could be accepting to not i, I don't mean accepting maybe but maybe tolerating uh -huh. of their choices of uh -huh. sexuality uh -huh. but how will you think the community will react to that given the kind of setting that we are in you know you go to you go to uh, a place and sorry you go to a place and uh, the people there are not welcoming to the sexuality that your child has chosen so don't you think it brings in a lot of pressure to you as a parent to maybe change your mind about the tolerating part of you mm -hmm. of their sexuality okay this is what i'm going to say mm. and with this I say cautiously. Yeah. You see, in this society that we live in today, mm. in these houses, we are all in our roofed houses. Yeah. And when we walk out there, nobody really knows us. Mm. Have you ever felt like people don't really know me? You know? Yeah. In our houses, we are our true selves. Mm. But out there, people can only guess yeah. what we are. Mm. or people will look at you and judge you for this and maybe you're not that mm. okay mm. and here we are talking a young person we're talking about a younger person yeah. who is like trying to wading their way through the murky waters and trying to figure out mm. am i this or that yeah. and i am one for letting them if if they feel is this like dressing for yeah. example let me just take the, uh, the example of dressing yeah we have and this i know many many mothers who have daughters because i talk from i i'd rather draw from experience yeah mothers who whose children um have gone through campus i mm. mean high school especially yeah. somewhere in high school and towards end of high school you yeah. find girls who just want to dress in baggy clothes in jeans in in you know uh, shoes that are not feminine at all mm. and these girls are dressing like boys yeah okay that does not mean that they are they are they they, they have you know it's about their sexuality or anything mm. it's just a face as i said it is a face and out there when they walk out there people can start saying hey okay uh, this one why is she dressing so manly you know there are lesbians nowadays you know such such kind of talk mm. how many lesbians out here or even gay people out here dress very manly okay mm -hmm. so when it comes to society and this i beg of us it, society is parents children in general yeah i know it is a natural thing to want to you know like first impressions mm. But sometimes before you speak, keep it to yourself, number one. Secondly, for the child, for this child who is telling you this is who I am, yeah. sometimes I think free expression. Remember we said we want to have an atmosphere where our children are able to express themselves. Mm. Of course, as a parent, you will need to do the checks and balances yeah. sometimes because when it's too extreme, mm. okay? Mm. Like I just, I remember when, when sagging started, 
there was too much of it until you'd be like, you know what, I'm not going with you with that trouser looking like that, yeah. you know. So there are checks and balances, of course, as a parent, because you have to teach your child to be decent and yeah. to be, you know, to be proper mm. in a way. So for me, I think that calls for you now parenting. If this is your child, you live in the same house also. Yeah. I mean, that house has rules. Let's, let's, as much as we are embracing like we are tolerating as you put it yeah let's also remind them that this house has one two three rules mm. and that also helps them when they are going out there in society and those judgments kind of of they will always be there even when you walk out here dan yeah. for no good reason someone will look at you and just decide yeah, dan okay. looks like <laughs> he's gay i mean and there's nothing you can do about it yeah. There's really nothing. You the, you know, I, I like the serenity. I, it's one, it's become my favorite. Mm. But the one person you can change. Is yourself. Is yourself. Those others, believe you me, no matter how hard you try, mm. you will never be able to do it. Yeah. Yes, that's my take. Okay. Yes. Um, I want to, I want to want to dig so much into this because mm. I know not so many people are open or uh, have the open mind to talk about this. So um, thank you very much for allowing us to have your time. I hope to see you in the next episode. Mm -hmm. And uh, maybe before we do the cut thing, okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. what will be your parting shot to everyone watching this video? Um. Parenting is hard, mm. and uh, as a parent, yeah. when where you where you feel stuck, please do not keep quiet. Mm. Many of us just go through, you know, like you go there, you go through school. Even when we were in school, we used to have breaks. Yeah, but life is like that. When you're going through life, give yourself breaks to just like really dig in deep and really understand what is, what is it that you feel about everything that has been going on yeah. and sometimes it can be so heavy and you're you're crushing but not knowing it mm. so self-care for parents is so important and especially when it comes to parenting teenagers and preteens yeah. and even young mothers you need a break when you need to talk to someone talk to someone mm. get information out here the information that pertains your parenting, your children, get that information for yourself. Yeah. So that you're coming from a point of knowledge in everything that you're doing around your home. Mm. You know, and and you know, and I wish you all the best. Believe you me, you need it. <laughs> uh, we all need it. And we need people who like push us. Where if you're in groups that you know support groups. I know they are new. It's a new thing with support groups. Yeah. And even these chamas we go to, you know, yeah. th these chamas and this, you know, when you're hanging out with your friends, just sometimes talk about, don't about talk about how life, uh, how hard life is, mm. you know, talk about your children, talk about what you're going through as a parent and get to hear what other people are going through. Sometimes you may think you're the only one dying of of you know this or that because yeah. your child is doing this or that but you'll be surprised that other people are sharing and in between you will get some help mm -hmm. so don't be shy these are uh, times when um, i think and i love it that um, by doing this and even out here there's a lot of talk on self-care on being able to talk talk out and just just reach out for mm -hmm. help yeah. so don't be alone in the parenting journey, whether mm. a single mother, single father, or in a relationship, talk about it. Talk to other people. Mm. Talk to other parents. Talk to professionals. You will get help. Okay. Yeah. Thank you very much, Frida. Uh, there you go, guys. A mother, a wife, and a parent in general. So <laughs> I wish, yeah. I, I hope that uh, this video was helpful to you. Uh, be, be sure to get more information from this place. Tune in next time and thank you for watching up to this point. Uh, bye bye and see you next time. Thank you.